you start. What do we say? The sun's out. The sun's out. That's nice. We got fish soup. We got lots of fish soup. Um, Bergen's cool. cool Bergen is cool. You should go to the fish market, get some fish soup. And fish cakes. Fish cakes. Two euro. Tim's only had 12 fluid ounces of coffee, so he's super grumpy. It's true. Yeah. I got told that I look more Norwegian today than Danish, and that I have a bit of Viking in me. I think she was just trying to get the tip. I didn't tip her. trip as planned about a year prior. The adventurers, Mike and me, Tim. We decided to start the trip off in Paris with a train to Frankfurt. We ate some lunch, we killed some time, we hopped on the train. Try to stay active, get some coffee, some beer, take some photos, stay energized and excited. Crashed real hard. But we finally made it to Frankfurt. Got ready to meet up with Mike's boy Theo. Found ourselves the red light district and a huge street party. So we're waiting for our car to be ready. We're sitting in an apartment a hotel. Looking at Frankfurt, watching some construction really, because cranes are really cool. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we're picking up our Audi A4 Avant at nine. And we gotta grab some stuff, so I guess we'll be there around 11 to 12. Yeah. We're gonna get a tent. We are gonna get a tent. Check out this crane. I don't know if you can see it. It's probably pretty far away. So. He's like 10 out of 10 for crane driving skill. Yeah, this guy's an incredible crane operator. They probably call him the operator. The operator? Yeah. Or the crane smith? Crane smith. I like that. Behold our chariot for the trip. Hey, Frankfurt. Been real. Next stop, wine country to visit Marcus and Becky. I have a big face. <laughs> That's the problem. Yeah, mine, mine too. Yeah. But, but it's not bad. When you have to buy a motorcycle helmet, yeah, you get always the cheapest one. Yes. Ones. Amazing hosts, amazing food, amazing puppies. Can't ask for more. Bitlich Pig Festival? Why not? No pig on the first day, it turns out. But we made up for that. Gifts. Prizes. And bumper cars. Where's <laughs> Tim? Reibekuchen, Reibekuchen, potato pancakes. Um. The whole crew riding the Ferris wheel. That Jackie though, girl can cook. Look at this handsome couple. And this handsome feller.
something called a moonrise, it turns out. Next morning, a little bit of vineyard exploration. And then maybe a quick joyride. Not in the awesome Audi. Yeah, we'll take the Porsche. And we'll unleash the beast. a hearty breakfast after an RPM fueled German engineering experience. Mike's favorite ice wine. <laughs> Yay! Hey, bye bye. Mirrors. Bye bye. <laughs> See you guys. <laughs> Bitberger. Oh, hey Cologne. Pronounced Köln if you want to get technical. Oh, hey, Clemens. Hey, Lara. Clemens has a baller flat. Hello, Hamburg. Hello, amazing fish sandwich shop on the water. Hey, fish sandwich dude. Note to self. Put Hamburg on the list for another visit. Brought to you by Maersk. It's all fun and games until you're driving to Denmark and your hotel decides to cancel and then you sleep in the car in a rest area in the cold and you're tired and sick. Shit sleep however means you wake up early to catch an amazing Denmark sunrise. Can you see the tired frustration in those eyes? Oh well, welcome to Copenhagen. mentioned pastries, right? It's kind of like a key thing on this trip. stop in Malmö, Sweden after being completely reamed by bridge tolls. Quick fae forest foray? That's what I do. We are on our way to Gothenburg, which I'm embarrassed to admit uh, is a completely butchered pronunciation. It's Yetebori. So, yeah. First stop, find the hotel. Second stop, find some delicious seafood. Found a place called Siobaran. Probably butchered that too. But killer fish soup, killer dessert. Next morning, quick breakfast, quick adventure. Super detailed caution signs. A little bit of a jaunt as we made our way to a bakery. Gotta test out some more cinnamon buns. Pretty good. Pretty good. This city certainly goes back on the list of must revisit, must spend more time. Somewhere north of Yetibori, we found a stone ship and some sheep. We 
we hiked, we picnicked, we found a nice quick diversion from the road. Made a couple hour drive over to Oslo. Once you get into Norway, immediately see the electric vehicle population increase. And we found some fish soup. Took a lot of pictures in this market, super high end, super fancy. Dawned on us real quick that Norway was going to be a pricey, pricey place. Somewhere between Oslo and Asker, we found a pretty good spot to kick back. Credit goes to Mike on this one. Back on the road again, this time headed to Bergen. Now I'm super paranoid about butchering names. I'll probably have to look that one up too. Yep, 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 yep. It's pronounced Bergen. So, and that's just Norwegian. That's not the actual Bergen dialect pronunciation. Yep. Let's not move too quick though, because there's like 10 hours between Oslo and Bergen, and the max speed is like 55 miles an hour. We found this bajillion year old road, the most idyllic little outhouse. Rick Sanchez would be proud to pop a squad here. Okay, see ya.
Dagestein Overlook. A scenic overlook overlooking Orleans Fjord. Hmm. We needed this diversion before our last leg, heading into Bergen. Difficulty here was obviously dodging cars on the tiny lanes, trying to pull over, and if you missed a little pull off to make room for another car, figuring out which of you is going to back up to the one that you missed. Bargain, welcome to the fish market capital of the entire world and also sausage. This is the fish market. It's got fish, whale, guys with red hats, scramps and oysters, and crabs, and that dude with the red hat, always. Gorgeous sunsets. Water. People with legs. Walking. Buildings. Tables and chairs. Look, we were super tired. Wiped out. Hard to describe the beauty of that place. Thankfully, we found the most idyllic little cabin to rest in. I'm cold and wet. Could be the national motto for Norway. I'm having some breakfast. Tim's having some breakfast. This is called a fatty piece of bread. Mm -hmm. uh, what was it actually called? I don't know, Berliner? A Berliner. It's called a Berliner. No, no. I said it was like a Berliner, but theirs. It's a Bergener. Looks delicious. So, as you can see, the weather is charming. We are at a quaint little bakery. Chance of 100% rain for the next four years. <laughs> it's not that bad. It's just a 100% chance of rain for the next six days. Yeah. Which feels like forever. Tim heard a quote this morning. It goes, There's no such thing as bad weather, just inappropriate attire. I say there's no such thing as bad weather, just bad attitudes. I stole that from something else. House. Exploration day in Bergen. We found our way up to the top of the hill. Literally walked up there. At this point, like I said, we were exhausted. We were a little bit tired of each other. A little bit irritable. So we had to take a an excursion out to a more natural place to recenter ourselves. With the anticipated six days of rain, we decided to move onward back toward Oslo. Found the longest tunnel in the world. And some really off-putting Airbnb advertisements. But we ended up with a pretty cool spot at a school that was closed for summer and reopening soon. We hit like the last day of actual vacancy. My fellow travel enthusiast Dana recommended that we check out the sculpture park in Oslo. It's called Vigeland. Looked up the pronunciation on that. 
A lot of sculptures of dudes, dudes wrestling dudes, dudes wrestling women, dudes wrestling babies. Just everything. Stockholm, Sweden. Home of meatballs. And a line of people waiting for meatballs. Met a cool kid named Albert. He shared with us some cheese and some heart of a game animal of some sort. Balls o meat. Compulsory visit to the local bakery, of course. And visiting a cafe that I have had on the list for a long time. Rosenblad Stride Scorps Boutique. Probably just don't say it out loud. All you really need to know is this is the place. This is the place if you want the best cinnamon roll that Tim has ever had. Cardamom or something secret ingredient is definitely love. He is a good boy. Okay. Stockholm is a good place. Good food, good people, cool things to see. Maybe it was discovering renting scooters that helped us enjoy it so much. Or maybe it was the super narrow alleyway that they boast about. Or because we looked good, real good. Man, they look good too. Everyone there looked good. The next leg of our journey took us to Vastervik, which is a tiny little town with a little, I guess, Boy Scout summer camp and horse ranch nearby that wasn't being used, so we got another hotel room from it. Three, two. The lodging also happened to be nestled between a lake and a forest. These two items made for pretty good evening time and morning time activities. Just before our Vestervik departure, we had to go to a local bakery and found Bakery 96, second best bun of the trip. Southbound Sweden, keeping close to the coast, we came across Kalmar and its castle.
goal is to make it to Trelleborg or Trelleborg to take a ferry to Germany. We landed there perfectly, but Trixie Airbnb led us to Malmo for the night. dropped us in Rostock and we immediately beelined to Berlin and got our hotel. It was insanely hot. Found some scooters, found the Hof, found some food. And once the sun set we navigated over to the park to hang out in one of the oldest beer gardens in the city not in all of Germany. The next day we knocked out some actual sightseeing. sightseeing we got in and the overall exhaustion in the past couple days of driving, we decided to depart and make our way back to a bit of home base, back to where Marcus and Jackie call home. On the way back we ran into Leipzig. Marcus and Jackie.
Climax. We just shared it. Light one up. And let's wind it down. That's really it, plus some chocolate. We learned we gotta slow things down a little bit, take our time, and if we like a place, stop. Even if we are rolling past, we have departed, turn it around and go back. That and research pronunciation. <laughs>